Hello everyone. Today we will learn about the measurements of nutrition status. Uh, as you can see in this picture, some people are measuring the height, some people are measuring the weight and we are actually showing their graduations. Okay. So this person was fat, now he has become lean. Okay, so this is the nutritional status. That means the status of nutrition in your body. And we will measure this by certain techniques. So let us move forward. Welcome to Educators. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe and put the bell icon for notifications on the updates. Let us move on to the main video. Nutritional status is divided into A, B, C and D methods. What does A stands for? Anthropometric measurements, B for biochemical measurements, C for clinical and D for dietary measurements. About the anthropometry measurements. What is basically an anthropometry? But before moving to that, we'll learn about the different advantages of anthropometry. First of all, anthropometry is very less expensive, like minimal uh, things are required and minimal training is required to do the anthropometric measurements. And these readings are reproducible. That means you just can actually check the readings, you just can find the readings and you can walk money, work accordingly. And the objective is of high specificity and sensitivity. Like suppose you are measuring the height and uh, you are wearing you, are, you have made a bun over here and your height scale is over here at the end and not over here anthropometric rod so what will happen you'll have a false uh, height measurement so it should be with high specificity the specific the maintenance the criteria that has been mentioned it should be maintained and of high sensitivity suppose you're uh, measuring the weight and what we say before measuring the weight uh, open your shoes and all and then stand straight but if we wear the shoes and stand on the weight scale then what will happen the weight of the shoes will also come there are other variables uh, of measurements like the height weight MUSC the skin pole thickness weight and heat ratios etc and they can be actually gradable they are gradable they are numerical that means some number you will get suppose 80 kg uh, maybe 5 feet 6 inches height 80 kgs weight so these are all in numbers which you can grade and you can uh, take that in different and plot that in different growth charts or maybe you can do some further calculations with this so these are the advantages of anthropometric measurements now we will move forward to the anthropometric measurements basically anthropometric measurements are different for the child and the infant and also different from the for the adult so anthropometric of infants and children includes length calculation or height calculation length for infants those who can't stand and height for those who can stand weight calculation MUSC MUSC's full form is middle upper arm circumference head circumference and chest circumference now weight measurement if the uh, weight of the is measurement is mainly made in kgs in India and pounds abroad. So definitely you can see that there is a weight scale over here mainly basically these are all spring balance. Okay, and the infant is just placed on the weight scale and here is a digital weight scale. You can see the reading is over here. This is known as this particular weight scale is known as the Salter weight scale mainly used in ICDS center this is basically a spring balance as you can see over here a spring balance and an analog clock is here this is the spring balance a bag kind of thing is there which you can see where the child is sitting so here the two legs will come out and the child will sit in over here so this is the weight scale of the which is known as Salter weight scale and the weight will be recorded in this clock for the length and height measurement as you can see this this infant if we measure want to measure the height we will measure it as length see this is the infantometer so we are placing the child 
and we are pushing this board this is a movable board this board is a movable board along along the length of the child so this is also movable okay so we can determine and this case the infant can stand so this is a stadiometer you have to keep your back touched with the rod this is the anthropometric rod it is known as the anthropometric rod or the stadiometer you have to place your head on the rod and your back on the rod and this is an adjustable bar which can be adjusted up and down along with your height so this is how weight of an infant and length or height of an infant is measured now once you know the weight and height this is the weight of the child and the height of the child what we do mainly in the icds or the anganwadi centers we plot this in the growth chart so this is a growth chart you see a w a w means anganwadi so this is a growth chart which is uh, used in the anganwadi center so here you will plot the weight in kg and age in month suppose the child is of 12 month of age with 6 kgs maybe so the plot will be here so this is the so this is 12 months baby and 6 kgs weight so you will plot the growth chart over here and so you can see that it is falling in the orange zone the light orange zone it is grade 3 so if you are having a child of 12 months age and of 6 kgs then you are having of grade 3 malnutrition but similarly 12 months age if it's of 10 kgs over here see 10 kgs of weight so this is normal okay this is how you plot the height and weight according to the age and you can understand whether the child is normal whether the child is grade 1 undernourished grade 2 grade 3 or grade 4 so this grade 1 grade 2 grade 3 grade 4 is the degree of malnutrition so you can see that group good good indicator growth that means suppose you have started from here and your growth is like this growth curve is like this so it's very good that means it's actually trying to improve if your growth rate you have started for from here and your growth rate is just straight so it's not very good it's dangerous and it's even dangerous suppose you have started over here and it is falling down so that means your growth rate is severely bad okay so this is how you plot the growth chart Uh, uh, uh along with the height and the weight and you try to determine the nutritional status of an infant now if you want to check whether the infant is having any muscle wasting or not muscle wasting can be due to protein deficiency so we calculate this muse or middle upper arm circumference with this belt this belt is try uh, tied at the midpoint of the acromion and the olecranon process so at the tip of the elbow tip of the shoulder sorry and tip of the elbow and the midpoint of it we are allowing this tape and if the centimeter or the amount is in the green zone that is this is the green zone then it is okay the nutrition is okay if it's in this yellow zone the small yellow zone as you can see then mean that means we have started the malnourishment and if it falls in the red zone the red zone as you can see that means it's severely malnourished another two things that is checked uh, in infant one is the chest circumference to see the development of the rib cage and also muscle wasting over there and head circumference to check the uh, brain development whether it is complete or not as your brain development is fulfilled it will match with the Uh, increment of your body and the head actually the head when uh, birth is there when a baby is born the head size is larger than the chest body size but actually what happens your chest size match matches your head size and it becomes smaller when it doesn't become smaller the ratio of the head and chest becomes okay normal so this is the most this is calculated or measured at the most bulged position and back 
and you can measure the brain development of this. You can also see whether there is any lump or there is any extraneous, uh, extraneous growth in your uh, head or not which can actually check the brain development completely. And chest circumference at the midpoint just, just measure this. Okay, with this we have completed the different anthropometric measurements of children. Now we move on to the anthropometric measurements of adult. So, anthropometric measurements of adults include height measurement, weight, BMI, waist circumference, hip circumference and waist to hip ratio. So, height and weight which will help you to get the BMI and waist circumference and chest, uh, hip circumference which will help you to get the waist to hip ratio. So, you can see the stadiometer, it's just like the, in, uh, the children, it's just the stadiometer, you have to stand with the head, back and the toe keep leaned on the stadiometer and you just can measure this bar up and down and take the height. You should not wear any shoes or any headgear as suppose. For the weight, as you can see, the women, but this is a very wrong posture. This is a very wrong posture. If you stand like this, the weight will be wrong. So, you have to stand straight. Okay, that, that's why I have taken this picture because it's a wrong procedure. So, yeah, when you are waiting, see there is no shoes. That is good and you have to stand straight. So, basically, this is a spring balance. You can also use digital clocks. When you get the height and you get the weight, you can measure the BMI, which is weight in kg and height in meter square. So, you have to take the weight from here and you have to check the height from here and then you can measure the BMI. The BMI full form is body mass index. This is the classification chart given by WHO. So, suppose your BMI rate is below 18.5 in case of Asian, it's underweight. If it is between 18.5 to 22.9, you are normal. Henceforth, if you are uh, BMI is more than 30, you are obese. Now, depending on the amount, if you are within 30 to 40, this is obesity type 1, type 2, type 3. This is how you can measure the nutritional status of your body with the use of height, weight and calculating the BMI. Now, we will move forward to waist and hip circumference. So, just check where to check the hip circum the, the waist circumference. This is the lowest rib. This portion is the lowest rib. This is the iliac crest. And so, you have to take the midpoint of it. So, this point will be your waist circumference. See, over here, this is the lowest rib. This is the iliac crest. And you have to check the waist circumference over here. So, this is the right position of checking the waist circumference. In case of hip, this was your waist and this is your hip line. So, the most bulged portion will be taken as the hip circumference. Over here, for both male and female, the most bulged portion will be taken as the hip circumference. When you know the waist circumference and you know the hip circumference, you can calculate the waist to hip ratio. So, if the waist to hip ratio is 0 0.75, it's excellent. 0 0.80, it's good. 8.5, it's average. And 9.0 is high. So, a waist to hip ratio for more than 0 0.95 for men is dangerous. And for 0 0.85 in women is also dangerous, which are more prone to diseases like heart disease. So, on the basis of this, you can get two shapes of your body. One is the apple shaped, where you have a more waist ratio than your hip ratio, generally seen in male, male and a pear shaped body, where the hip ratio is more, the hip circumference is more than the waist circumference, generally seen in females. So that's all for today. Thank you.